Before we even start, this thing can trigger Alexa routines. Is it okay if I make my head explode now? Will there, will there be complaints in the comments section that you always make your head explode? I wouldn't care if you did. If over time you've bought yourself an Amazon Echo and some Wi-Fi smart bulbs and some Wi-Fi plug sockets, then you've probably realized that things start to get a little bit HAL 9000. Your smart home bulbs are unavailable, Dave. How do you like that, you little bitch? You don't like that at all, do you, Dave? Now, if you speak to any Philips Hue owner about this situation, they'll tell you their system is much better because... But what if I told you that Broadlink, and this is completely insane, have been creating a secret protocol in the background for quite some time now that is better than Z-Wave, better than Zigbee, and better than Wi-Fi for not only reliability and range, but also for battery life and price. And not only this, but their latest product actually solves one of the smart home's biggest ever problems. Tell you're an idiot. Idiot. He's making up a bloody smart home protocol now! I hate Paul Hibbert! Paul Hibbert knows nothing about smart homes and should be killed! I'll bitch slap all three of you in a second. In the meantime, here is Broadlink adding 68 bulbs to their network in one go in 11 seconds. This is Broadlink casually syncing 100 devices over a five-story building without the use of a single hub. Just in case you didn't hear that, no hub involved at any point. This is Broadlink making a Bluetooth mesh network around a 4,000 square meter lake. You'll just excuse me for a moment. Thanks to Broadlink for sponsoring today's video and for sending me the starter kit for their new Fastcon BLE products. This starter kit contains three bulbs and a four button scene switch, which I have used in an absolutely ingenious way to stop my misses from cutting power to my smart bulbs. The starter kit also contains a tiny bridge that you don't even need. This little bridge will connect your devices to Amazon Alexa and Google Home if that's what you want, but if you simply wanted lights that you could control with an app or a light switch, and in the future, a motion sensor and a door sensor too, then you don't even need the bridge to do this. And this is the weirdest part. Even without that bridge, I can disconnect my router from the internet and it all still works. How is it even doing that? I've confirmed with Broadlink and this is all intentional. These devices are intended to be entirely local without a bridge, which is insane on its own. But on top of that, you don't even need an account to sign up to this service. Huh, it's, um, it's not asking me to sign up. I can just add a device. How strange. The app has no sign up screen. You don't need to sign up. You can just start adding devices to your internal network. Anyway, here's an episode of Star Trek. Captain, the Kardashians are hailing us. On screen. I don't understand why there's all this judgment about the way that we each want to live our lives. I think I feel bad that I invited all these people to this huge wedding and blew everyone out. Ah! They're using and some kind of brain melting telepathy! What are you gonna do? Hit the subscribe button now, or Captain Picard and Lieutenant Six of Nine will be defeated, and Star Trek will be replaced by reruns of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Find out at the end of the episode if enough of you subscribed. 
Broadlink's fast con technology has been a thing for a while now, but they've only recently paired it with Bluetooth Low Energy to bring us these products, and the setup process is ridiculously straightforward. All you do is hit the plus button, hit add devices, screw in the bulb, and it will pair in literally one second. Oh my goodness, this has been far too easy. I have never seen anything move so quick. <coughs> Except Chris Rock's head when Will Smith slapped him, of course. Move pretty fast. <coughs> By default, the scene switcher will actually control the bulbs without you doing anything else. But if you want to customize what those individual buttons do, which scenes that they will actually trigger, you can do that in the app too. And making a scene is actually pretty ingenious. All you do is you set the bulbs up to do the things that you want them to do as part of the scene, click the plus button again, and then select scene and click save current status. This will actually save whatever it is the bulbs are doing to that scene. Once you've got the scenes you want, you can assign each scene to a button on the switch, and whenever you press that button, your scene will happen. If you set the bulbs to their coldest possible setting, you get a really good approximation to actual daylight. And that daylight I have set as scene one. So button one will now give me daylight. Button two is off. And button three is disco mode. Just in case I ever fancy having a disco at the top of my stairs. <laughs> Button 4 could be set to turn your lights on to their dimmest possible settings. This is so that if you got up in the night to go to the bathroom, you wouldn't necessarily have to be blinded by the light. And this brings me onto the clever part. My wife is the sexiest person on earth, but she also has a terrible hobby. Nisha loves to kill the power to my smart balls. It's literally her goal in life. No, literally. She would do it all day long if she didn't have to go to work. So what I've started doing is wiring light switches to be permanently on and then removing the switch and covering the wiring over with remote control light switches that are battery powered. Genius. I had to drill a couple of holes in the back plate so that I could secure them in place, but you'd never know this wasn't a normal light switch because the design on it is really nice. And with a two year battery life, this is the perfect replacement for my mains switch. The starter kit is three E27 bulbs, but Broadlink have plans to release GU10s and various others too. So if you have different lighting in your living room or wherever you plan to implement this, they should have you covered. But a switch isn't actually automation. Thankfully, Broadlink have plans to release a motion sensor and a door sensor too, and uh, I just might have a couple of those things just waiting. You better subscribe, otherwise you might not see them. And if you don't subscribe, bad things will happen. And now to find out if enough of you pressed subscribe. I can feel the subscribe button being pressed. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, my wife. <laughs> so these are cheaper than Zigbee and Wi-Fi devices, so where have they cut the costs? I, I can't tell you, I have no idea. I have tested them side by side and can prove it using my Lux meter, because you know. <laughs> Philips gets utterly destroyed for every color. That goes for reds, it goes for oranges, it goes for greens, it goes for blues and purples, and for cool whites, the Broadlink bulb is actually twice as bright as the Hue equivalent. Twice as bright for a £15 bulb. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but as Philips Hue's product manager, I simply must object. Why? Because it makes us look terrible. I object to your f***ing face, and if you interrupt this episode again, I'll put a brick through it! Mr. Socky's been watching a lot of Better Call Saul. Lots of courtroom drama and violence. Anyway, Philips, you is the worst. 
I'm reliably informed by Broadlink that timers and schedules will be stored in the cloud. And I think this is a major missed opportunity to have a fully local service. I'd like to see Broadlink change this with a firmware update or a software update and have the schedules and timers stored on the little mini hub instead. Hello, I'm Paul from the future. Broadlink have just informed me that they plan to update this very soon, so check the description for all of the things I'm about to say because things are changing very quickly. I'll let you get back to him. If you cut power to the bulbs and reintroduce power, the bulbs come on. They don't remember that they used to be off, which is only really a problem if you have power cuts. If you have a power cut in the middle of the night and then power is returned at 2 a.m., you're gonna get woken up. I've told Broadlink this is a bad idea, and again, I'm hoping with a firmware update, this will be improved. The scene switcher is a little bit inflexible in what you can do with it. You can not, for example, have button one as a toggle. You can't have that do on and off. You have to have a separate button for off. You also don't have any control over what holding the buttons down does. Uh, holding them down, I think if you do button one, it does uh, brightness, so it dims the bulb down as you hold it. Button two, I think, does color temperature, something like that. Uh, and you can't control this. These, these aren't things you can choose, and there's no double click. I think this could be a little bit more flexible, and again, hopefully with a firmware update, they'll sort that out. For all of these things, I will update the description if they improve them. Broadlink is building a system here that could easily replace Home Assistant. Aside from the timers in the cloud, we're talking about a completely local system that is entirely secure, entirely reliable, and that requires no third-party account. It has a super long battery life, a wide range of products, and seemingly a never-ending range. Even with just one bulb, so no mesh, I can go all the way to the bottom of my garden and this thing still responds. I can't get far enough off my property for it to fail. I'm not sure if I've completely got across exactly what's happening here, but Broadlink are completely giving up control. I have never seen another smart home manufacturer do this to such a degree. They're literally saying, you bought them from us, but they're actually yours. This is amazing because they've even given you the ability to back your products up locally. If you wanted to get all of your devices backed up just in case your phone dies, you can actually back them up to another phone. There is literally no requirement for the cloud, but if you want the cloud, you can still have that too. They're planning to give you the ability to sign up for an account too, which means that you can back your devices up to the cloud as well as your local devices. This is a seriously bold move on Broadlink's part, and it's going to shake up the industry. We're talking about a local device that's not Wi-Fi based, that doesn't require a bridge. That is unheard of. As usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick these up and a 15% discount code. If you use that, you're gonna get 15% off, get these products cheaper, and then later on decide, I really liked those, I shall get the rest of the Broadlink products when they come out soon. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you wanna see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. If you don't, the Kardashians will take over Star Trek. These are my patrons. Without them, there would be no video. If you want to be one of these incredible people here, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. Actually mesh in the way that the companies promise you will. <laughs> Paul Abbott's an idiot. Paul Abbott's an idiot. I've missed him. I've missed this guy. It's, it's literally her goal in life. <laughs> life. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Why does that happen every week? Shut up, girl! I'll kill you, you girl! <laughs> wow! <laughs>